How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the Cycle Cart Workshop. Uh, in two weeks' time, we'll be heading down to Wilcox, Arizona uh, for the uh, AZ200 and the USA 24-hour Cycle Cart Weekend. It's at the Pillsbury Vineyard, and it's a great time. Um, so the family will be going down. Kendall will uh, be in her Porsche Experimental, which is ready to go. The monocar needs some service. That's what this video is about. And Dorinda is our support team. So we have a good time. We're looking forward to it. So let's get on with the video and see what uh, we can do to this monocar. It's been just shy of 10 years since I installed this GX200 on this chassis. Um, I've run this thing hard for countless hours uh, in every kind of condition. Even had it on the track at Laguna Seca. Uh, but it's gotten to the point where it's smoking a little bit and as luck would have it I uh, installed a um, Predator 224 on the uh, Studebaker so I'm going to swap out the old engine from the Studebaker which is also a GX200 onto this chassis so um, let's get with uh, the program here and take this thing off uh, the last time uh, this uh, cycle cart was in the trailer, it uh, was in the upper uh, level ramp and it slid off the ramp and uh, it was stuck between the side of the trailer and the ramp so I had to wench it out. So I just want to make sure that the axles and everything is okay, differential. So here you can see the differential effect. These peerless differentials, they're almost bulletproof. And if you turn both, then it turns the sprocket. And that's why you can use a single, a single caliper right here on the disc, um, attached to the pumpkin. So everything seems to be okay there. So I can go ahead and remove the engine. Okay, let's see if I can get the master link off the chain. It's right, right here. I can pop it off with these needle nose. Come on. to be stubborn. There it goes. Okay. Alright. So there's the clip. This hasn't been a part in a while. So it's a little stuck. Okay, so now we disconnect the throttle. Okay, take out the cotter pin. that. Now this is the uh, the kill switch wiring. One wire goes to the coil, the other goes to ground and I have these quick disconnect fittings that are they're opposite. So you cannot hook them up incorrectly although it really wouldn't matter in this circuit. Alright so that takes care of that. Now there's four nuts and bolts and the engine can come off. Now I'm going to loosen the four bolts but here's a little trick that will help those who have ever had to adjust the chain uh, or take off the engine. What I do is I weld a little 
plate in here between the two nuts. So then I don't need a wrench up here. I just need to loosen the nuts and bolts. And this keeps everything in place. If you've ever had to tighten the chain, uh, or if you're going to have to tighten a chain, that's a nice touch to have those welded onto a strap. It's been a while since I've had this uh, engine off this chassis and boy it got dirty. That's all the dirt from running in the vineyard. And then you can see where this got bent right here when it fell off the, the ramp in the uh, trailer so I have to straighten that out. But otherwise everything looks pretty good. Okay so let's work on this motor. Uh, here's the uh, engine out of the uh, Studebaker. It's a GX200. Um, the governor is removed. It has a board out carburetor, a timing key, um, and it's a good strong engine. Uh, doesn't have that many hours on it. Uh, so let's talk about why this GX200 looks like this. Uh, back in 2014 when I built the Monocar, this was my inspiration car. It's a 1919 AV monocar cycle car from uh, Great Britain. Cute little thing. I like how it had the discs. That appealed to me. The bullet nose was nice and I really liked the fact that the engine was exposed so it would not overheat. Nice and compact. So that was the inspiration for this car and um, when I originally put the GX200, the engine just looked too modern. So I wanted to do something here to make it look more period correct, at least. Try. So that's where I came up with this idea here to add these components from a Kohler motor. Uh, I had this old engine block. It was a 1950 Kohler cracked block. It was really a worthless motor. So I took the shroud and the tank and the top to the air cleaner and uh, grafted it onto this engine. I made this intake out of steel. Uh, this is, I bought this online, this is just a glass um, fuel bowl which has a nice antique look to it. This is just for the oil breather here. And uh, the tank. So the thing I like about this is the gravity feed through the side bowl so you see any uh, sediment in here and then right into the carb it's uh, been a real reliable setup I'll say that so the uh, goal here is to swap these parts over to that engine so let's get to it okay so on this engine we don't need the shroud you don't need the carb and um, I think it's pretty much ready to accept the new components. On this engine I'm going to swap the torque converter over, the header, everything that's painted blue gets swapped and that's about everything. We might have to do a little bit on the wire in here, maybe not, we'll see. All right, let's take off the torque converter and the header.
Woo! Dirty. Looks like this engine has been through a war or two. <laughs> of course, it would clean up pretty good and I could rebuild it, which I probably will because I'm real happy with these Honda engines. So now that all the parts are removed, uh, everything gets a good cleaning and inspection and I can start putting things back together. Things are moving along. The assembly process is going quite well. Uh, I have the carburetor all in pieces, going to give it a good soak and then uh, that should work just fine. A little bit corroded but not bad. And then I need to clean up the part for the intake and the air cleaner, but that's easy work. Moving on. I've been laying on my back uh, cleaning the underside of this chassis, and it's looking pretty good under there. And it's clean up here too, so it's basically ready to accept the new motor. I'm pretty close to having this finished up. Uh, I cleaned up the chain and uh, I used uh, some of this chain guard lubricant on it. And uh, there's the master link. And uh, the rounded part of the clip goes in the direction of the travel. Okay. Now I have to adjust the chain. So getting the, the chain tension just right is a bit of a challenge, can be. So I just made this simple stick. It's got a little angled end on it. And it goes in here against the seat back. And then I can wedge it in there to get the chain right where I want it. And I've learned that uh, if you run the chain a little on the loose side, it seems to love it. It seems to love it. I've never had one come apart when they're a little on the loose side. I have the throttle cable loosely hooked up and uh, I swapped a couple connectors. So that was easy. Nothing special. So uh, I just have to clean up the carburetor and we're back in business. All right, I have this thing ready to run. Um, you'll notice that we use a nylon sock over the air filter as a pre-filter. That works out pretty good because there's a lot of dust down there. So I'm going to wheel this thing out and fire it up. That is 
one nice running motor. It ran good when it was in the Studebaker also. Yeah, I'm real happy with it. So, uh, let's see, I just need to finish the rear cover. I think I'll be ready. Let's see if the kill switch works. Just like it should. Here is the rear cover to the monocar. I'm doing a little uh, repair work because uh, 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 the car was rear-ended when we were at Laguna Seca by one of the other cycle carts and it just smashed the crap out of the, the back end of this thing. So I subsequently repaired it, but the repair didn't hold because there's a weak spot here. This is a plywood core skinned with aluminum. So uh, I put some wood glue in here and I clamped it back together and I'm using these straps. I added this piece of wood here and that should strengthen this joint down here. I also have these, uh, these little ones here which will go in here like this after a little modification. So we'll see if the repair holds because Wilcox has some rough areas that could uh, break this again. We'll see. I finished the repair work. Looks like it ought to hold up much better than my previous attempt. Alright. Check that off the list. I think this looks alright for Wilcox. You can see right here where it split the aluminum. This, this whole section was bent up. From this black line down it was unrecognizable. You can even see some damage to her to the to the bumper and a scrape right there. But uh, you know that cycle carting things get beat up a little bit. Okay, now let's get this thing on the cart. Well, I managed to finish it up just in the nick of time because I'm loading it up tonight and we're heading out tomorrow for Wil Wilcox. You know, when I painted this thing, I used automotive paint, base coat, clear coat, and this thing still shines up after 10 years. Still looks good. Cleans up real nice. Alright, well that's the end of this video. I sure appreciate that you watch, and we'll see you next time.